Hi guys and welcome back to Model Fix. My name's Dan and today we're modding that. Okay, so for any of you lot who've been watching the previous videos, I've removed the tail lights, I've removed the bumper, and that was all in preparation for the turbo system that I'm about to fit. Um, I've also removed the exhaust in my previous video. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our own turbo system. Okay, so I've been collecting bits for God knows how long now. It's been about four years. And da -da, we are turbocharged, all done. No, I'm joking. So <laughs> what I'm doing at the moment is I'm doing a bit of a mock-up. I got that manifold from the owner's club. I got it quite cheap. I think it was homemade. It's a log manifold. I think it will work well. It's got the bungs for the O2 sensors. It's got a little bung for a, a exhaust temperature sensor and it works. The only thing about it, which I'm a bit gutted about, is it's not offset to the left. It should be offset to the left and it's in fact offset to the right. But anyway, I've managed to somehow cobble it together. So I've got a V-band adapter for the turbo and then from the turbo V-band adapter, I've got a V-band 90 degree flexi, which comes out here. So now I've got to work out what the rest of the exhaust system is going to do. What I want to do is have the exhaust system sort of with a little cat in it and then a little silencer and land about there. The turbo outlet, turbo outlet, sorry. Yeah, the turbo compressor side outlet needs to make it through an intercooler and into the in the manifold which is up there so I might need to clock the turbo a little bit but first of all what I need to do is get my intercooler kit out and I'm actually fitting an air to air intercooler back here somewhere low down and the exhaust high up as possible let's have a look at it so I bought this just over four years ago <laughs> and uh, it's got intercooler kit in it I've never opened the bloody thing so let's open it and see what's inside all right guys you want to see what's inside come with me -da! it's actually an air to air intercooler for a subaru impreza i think it'll be big enough so i think the next thing to do is get rid of the air box so i'm going to get rid of that pipe there get the air box out unplug the math and undo this pipe over here from the inlet because I need to make space for the intercooler piping and at the moment it's a bit jammed in this little area here and I'm thinking I might have to come back up over here because that intercooler is massive kind of action I'm going to get rid of this cross brace first just to give us a bit more room to get this out and then I'm going to loosen that jubilee over there um, and then unhook those clips down there and see what I mean about the cross brace being in the way anyway undo those clips take the top of the air filter off with that pipe and get it out the way oh unplug the math sensor as well okay so a quick little tip um, it's probably better to undo this end first and just pull off the, the hat off the box and undo this little wire retainer it clips out from underneath and then again from underneath and over. So you clip that down and then that clips out and over. And that becomes free. And then once you've done this and you can get to that one there, just wiggle it around then. Otherwise it's too rigid. And then also, just to note, there's a pipe that runs all the way around the, 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 the hat, if you like. And uh, you'll see that, so just pop it off. Okay, those two are out. Just remember that's got a big dong on it that needs to be wiggled out. So you have to do a bit of uh, wiggling to get that out. And this take the battery out, you could do that. And then the hat, there it is. And remember that the math sensor's in the hat, so I'll keep that safe somewhere, because you'll need that later. Okay, so next remove the filter from the hole. This is a K&N I put in about three years ago and never looked back. Might not be needing that now. Got a replacement for it and Next, we've got to get this bucket out. So there's a 10 mil there and a 10 mil there. And then this thing here just pulls out as far as I remember. But let's undo the 10 mils first. All right, we've got loads of room now, look. 
Can you see my nice shiny subframe? Painted that with Hammerite about five years ago and still as good as day I painted it. Beautiful. Right now, I've got to come from that plenum into the intercooler down here somewhere. I want to face the intercooler sort of that way. That way facing up. And pipe comes in from there into the intercooler and I'm thinking about turning this turbo around so we have the compressor that side because then we can come straight from there into the intercooler and then back out and straight up might be a better idea and the exhaust will sit right about there so I could just come 90 degrees and have a little silencer and come straight out maybe I don't know still toying with it all right guys another day of trials and tribulations of the turbo installation and uh, what we have got is I've temporarily mounted the uh, intercooler as you can see here it's not mounted here but that would sit a little bit further up if it was to be mounted um, probably about there something like that and then what I would want to do is build some sort of ducting to sort of catch the air so a duct that goes sort of straight down there with a the lip a little bit down like that. that was the idea now turbo wise I've flipped it around and as you can see the exhaust pretty much comes out in the middle which is what I want to do really but I need to get a silencer and maybe a a cat in there sports cat so I might have to go elbow up okay I'll have to have a think about that and then I'll then I'll tell you um, in terms of turning the turbo around that has helped me the compressor side now is very close to this side so if I came out of this intercooler for example and came round there it could come straight into there in fact I've got a pipe here see so that could go pretty much sort of in there and then straight into there pretty much that's really good but I think we need a smaller intercooler really this intercooler is actually for a Subaru Impreza with about 450 brake horsepower something silly like that and we're only going to be running probably 300 at the most um, starting off at about 240 260 something like that so Overkill really, so I'm going to try and get a smaller intercooler. This is 650 mil of core, so and it's very wide as well, as you can see there. So I've ordered up another intercooler now, a smaller one, um, and hopefully I'll be able to take the pipe straight from there up and straight from there up. If I can do that, that'd be amazing. If you do want to clock your turbo, guys, there's six bolts on this compressor housing, just loosen them all off and then it turns should turn quite freely and then you can get it where you want it and tighten them up but one of the problems you will encounter depending on what turbo you've got is the actuator normally mounts to those two bolts there um, no longer any good so you're gonna have to make up something to fit on the other side and the actuator will actually sit on the back there can you see the wastegate so yeah, so I'm going to have to make up a mount that maybe comes off of there and goes to the actuator. And then the actuator will be a bit of a pain to get to as well. But we'll, we'll deal with that later. Alright, next step guys. I'm going to cut the bumper. I'm going to get rid of that bit there. Allow a bit more cooling to the intercooler. And allow the exhaust pipe to come out nicer. Oh, that's better. Alright, I'm just draining the oil now. Time to remove the old sump. Look at the state of it. Uh, all the oil's been drained. I've got to take out all of these little 10 mils now. Can you see them? 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. There's two on the end near the flywheel. And then there's, I don't want to count them to be honest, but there's loads that go all the way around. Yeah, so I've got to take those off. And then I've heard the sealant is a bit of an arse to get off. Something to note, there's a nut and stud on that bit and that one there as well if you can see that and i think that's so you can locate the sump 
when you put it back on. Very good tilter. But anyway, I've taken all the nuts and bolts out and the thing still won't budge. So I'm gonna have to get creative now and try and lever it off somehow. Sump is off. Now I did find that it was a bit of a pain to get off, but what I did was I went into this little corner. It does have a little ridge all the way around it. And uh, what I did was I got a flat blade screwdriver with a, like a spanner head on it. And then I sort of wedged it in there and gave it a twist with the spanner and it lifted it quite high there. Right there I think I lifted it, if I remember correctly. And uh, once this side popped off, the rest of it followed quite quickly. So um, yeah, that's the sump off. I'm just gonna give it a tidy up under here now, get rid of all that old sealant and then prepare the new sump and stick it on. All right guys, all nice and clean under here now. To clean it, I just use a stand new blade on its own, scraped off all the old glue, and then uh, just used a bit of thinners on a rag and wiped it all down. I've got a rubber, rubber glove on there. <laughs> that's the oil pickup is just dripping. This is the inside of the engine. I'm gonna put some nice flush in there after I've done this. I read the reviews on it and it is the best stuff on the market. So I will be using that. Okay, so I'm just going to drill out the hole for the oil drain in the new sump. It's the brand new Toyota Z sump. I'm just going to drill a hole where this factory spot weld is there. So it's three, three and a half centimeters down from the flat surface there. And 2.8 from that ridge to there to 28 mil or 2.8 centimeters. Okay guys, sealant's on, and it's time for the sump to go on. Oh yeah, put the uh, oil drain fitting on as well. So that's all lovely and nice. All right guys, the new sump is on. Just exploring some uh, ideas with the intercooler. So I've got this bend here, which goes nicely around there, and then up there, and I could just take a straight from that elbow. Obviously that elbow needs trimming. Or I could go elbow 45, that's the black pipe. And then 90 out of there and then I need another 45 to connect those two. So I could do that. And then the other side is literally elbow out and then straight into this. So I'm gonna get a nice black one for that. I'll show you that in a minute. And then I'm looking at air filter, that side. I was thinking about coming sort of round through here and down here, but if I drill holes in that mud guard, I'm gonna get a whole lot of stuff flicked in there. I don't want the engine sucking up that. And then I also might have an airflow problem because it's at the back. So, what I'm thinking is we go 90 up out of the turbo. Get rid of this evap stuff here. We should be able to go just sort of lowish down here so we can close the lid. And uh, stick the air filter in deep down in that lovely area there where the vent is. That would be beautiful. So I'm gonna try that. Let's get rid of this evap. So if I can get the plumbing done and firm, then I can mount the intercooler properly. Because as you can see, it's hanging off these wires at the moment. <laughs> and then think about ducting and all that sort of stuff. So let's let's get that done. That side and that side. So the first thing you might have noticed is this elbow here is too far to the left. So I'm gonna cut it about an inch and bring it in so that pipe sort of moves to the right a little bit. This is a reducer. Uh, the throttle body outlet is actually 70 mil, and I'm using two and a half inch 63 mil uh, intercooler pipe and intercooler. So uh, you need a reducer 70 mil down to 63. Okay, as you can see, I've taken about an inch off that now, and we still need to come more to the right with it. So um, as you can see, that pipe's not actually sitting straight. So I think we'll come a little bit more to the right, take probably another half inch off, maybe another inch in fact. Okay, so as you can see now, 
There's a 45 which I've shoved into that 90. And then that's a 45 coming out of there. But what I'd need to do in order to make them mate nicely is, is cut this pipe about there and cut this pipe and then put a straight joiner on them. But what I've actually noticed is this pipe wants to come straight down. So it might be better to just put a straight pipe on it, come to about here and then you cut this 45 instead of cutting two 45s. Okay, this water pipe here, that pipe there, goes in there into that fitting there at the back of the turbo and then we've got a T in to this and then come from the, the front of the turbo here so what I'm going to do for now is just disconnect this because it's all sort of in the way of my intercooler pipes it might give me a bit more space disconnect that all right guys after a lot of toying around I think we're pretty much there so I originally cut this 45 to go in here um, but it wasn't seating nicely and you've got to have a nice flat seat on these silicons otherwise you might get a leak and uh, it just so happened that one of the ends started cut off a straight piece like this here a slot in there and with a little bit of wiggling around the pipes are sitting quite happy there and I'm quite happy with that setup so that's quite good the compressor housing clears the boss member as well. I don't know if you can see the light through there. Well, I can get my finger in there anyway, so that's good. And then on this side, the the piece that I couldn't get to fit on the other side fits. It seems to fit okay here. It might still be a bit short, and I've got a silicon 45 coming, so I might just go straight out of there with this bit of pipe here out of there, and then go silicon 45 across there. We'll work that out. And then look, we're going 45 here. We narrowly miss that, as you can see, there's a gap. And I'll wrap that in a bit of wasted silicon so it doesn't chafe on there. And then up into the manifold with the elbow that we had, I trimmed that down. So with that, I actually ended up trimming away that much of it, which is a good two inches, I'd say. But slowly, slowly, you know, if you cut it all in one go, you couldn't end up in a situation like I did with that bit of pipe there. So yeah, I think my advice would be cut slowly and keep going at it until it fits. It takes time, but it's worth it. So I'm going to wait for a few more bits to come through the post. I've got a black one of those, so I'm going to swap that out. But I just wanted to mop this up and make sure it's good. Finalise this setup, make sure I'm happy with it. And then what I need to do is work out some mounting points for this intercooler. So from there to here either or there to maybe the chassis, but I think the crash bar might be the best place to go. So from here to here with a bit of strap, and then from here to here with a bit of strap, and then uh, we'll fit some sort of rubber vibration dampers. So yeah, I'm getting excited now, guys. Once that's actually built up, once that's mounted, then we can go and build the air scoop that will be coming down. Another thing I'm a bit worried about is the exhaust clearing the intercooler because what I've got coming is a bit fatter than this and I want to go through here. We'll have to wait for that to come I guess. So I've got a nice black silicon 45 and I've got a bit of solid pipe in there and that actually sits a lot nicer so I'm happy with that now. Alright guys so we've got the pipe set up where we want them now so I'm going to mount this intercooler. I think I'm going to go straps off back of this to there via a bobbin I'll probably got to put the, the rubber mount in here same on this side and then here these are the things I was talking about one of my mates told me about them good guy and then a strap from here up to about here nice five mil metal strap let's do it one has been made and bolted to the crash bar and it's pretty bloody solid just with that in there. Um, I'm going to shorten this end of this bobbin down to about there probably. And uh, I'll need to shorten that side down as well. And get it nice and flat to sit on there. Um, but yeah, it's good that is 5mm strap. If you're wondering how I am um, mounting these, uh, basically I'm using stainless steel rivnuts, uh, as you can see here. 
and I'm not using a gun I'm using this tool that I bought off eBay basically you, you hold it in place with a spanner and you tighten down this nut it acts as a press to get maximum grip on it and it's nice and solid you're not relying on the, the strength of your grip to be able to uh, secure that and a lot of the cheap Chinese ones are aluminium as well so soft metal you see I just wanted it nice and solid and that's what it looks like with the bumper on I need to do something with that I rather overzealously cut out the middle bit but I think we can make it look nice we've reached a bit of a milestone guys the intercooler is now fully mounted so as you can see they've adjusted these a little bit cut the excess length out of the bolts or the threaded end if you like so that's all done and then on the inside we've got these lovely brackets here so you've got the bobbin on the inside this time of uh, here and then mounted across onto the intercooler itself and it's still sitting at the lovely angle I want it now I can finalize all of these hoses here um, get them mounted up and then air filter on this side air filter just arrived today so we'll have a mess about with that in a minute but I want to go deep in that hole there straight to that duct over here and that will mean I have to remount the um, or relocate this a little bit further back because if I go 90 over there that's going to cover that so move this back might undo that now and then from the turbo air filter it's going to go up to there as a 90 cut it down and then 45 right the way into there hello air filter you're going to get loads of air there aren't you <laughs> got rid of this hard pipe here which is a vacuum that goes from there and then it goes to this side and goes to that evac box which is no longer there so I'm just decommissioning that there's two plastic holder things that screw onto here they just need to snap the pipe out of there and I literally snapped it out because that's now toast as you Americans would say and then what I've got to do is disconnect this vacuum hose which comes directly from the inlet manifold and this valve here this is called a VCV solenoid and basically what it does is it occasionally uh, sucks the vapors from the tank and pumps them back into the inlet manifold so don't need that you have to leave it plugged in otherwise you're gonna get an engine light so I'm gonna leave it plugged in disconnect that use that for my blow off valve and hide this away somewhere nice so we've made some decent progress today out of the turbo compressor into the intercooler all black pipes now along there out of the intercooler 45 out and then 45 again pretty much on a hard pipe clear that I might just put some rubber sort of edging strip on there just to avoid any contact but there is about five mil there and there's about five mil or probably a centimeter between that anti-roll bar and the silicone as well and then we go up there shoot up there dump valve here so at the moment I'm thinking about dumping to atmosphere because I have got a three bar map sensor um, so I don't have to worry about an airflow meter but if I do have to put airflow meter in I've got space there for it from there to there but for now there's just a bit of pipe and then into the intake what I'm planning to do is if even if, if I want to go recirc I can go pipe out of there round the back and then down there somewhere I've got a fitting for that or oh, I could even go up here I've got a I've got this fitting here thinking I might have to go recirc so I can use that if I need to